record and close this. So um, this is really an opportunity for us to put into practice conversations worth having, the two practices that are associated with turning any conversation into a conversation worth having. And why this is so important, and especially right now, uh, but it's always important, is that conversations are kind of like the water in which we swim. We are always in conversation, either with one another or in our own minds. And those conver conversations are fateful because our words trigger different biochemical reactions within our body-mind, and those in turn influence our health, our well-being, our relationships, and our capacities to succeed. So just like the water in which fish swim, if the water's toxic, fish don't thrive. If our conversations are depreciative, we can't thrive. So the idea is to turn those conversations into conversations worth having um, that help us thrive and um, live healthy, happy lives. The two practices that allow us to do that are generative questions and positive framing. And when you put those together, they create a conversation worth having. A generative question is a question that changes the way people think and changes the images they have about the future. And as soon as you change the way you think or the images you're holding, it shifts the way you can move forward in a conversation or from a position. And generative questions are not always positive. They may simply be questions that deepen understanding or deepen relationships before beginning to generate solutions to move forward. And positive framing is basically Framing a conversation so you're talking about what you want instead of what you don't want. You're looking um, to engage in conversations that actually move you towards um, desired outcomes. So what we're going to do um, with the next 26, 27 minutes of this conversation is actually apply those two practices to any kind of a challenge or a troubling situation that you are dealing with that um, you, you keep seeing in the news or in your organization, something where people keep spinning around a negative problem or issue, um, or they're stuck. Um, and how do we turn that into a conversation worth having? It can be between a person, a team, the organization, or at the present time, we've got some pretty serious ones going on in our nation. So if you can um, type into the chat box any situation that you're, you're sitting there saying, I'm not quite sure how to turn this one into a conversation worth having. And then what we'll do is we're going to use the whiteboard so that everybody on this call can add their suggestions onto the whiteboard. The way you access the whiteboard is as soon as Jackie shares the whiteboard, there will be a toolbar at the very top of your screen and on it there'll be a, a view options. If you click on that, there'll be a drop down menu and just kind of go down the drop down menu to see annotate and click on that. Then another toolbar will pop up and if you click on format, you can choose your color. And we'd ask you to please set the font at either 12 or 14. Um, 14, I think, is actually probably the ideal as we've been experimenting with this. And then if you click the T, it's a text. You can type your generative question. Um, and then uh, we'll be able to create uh, a whole whiteboard for, for each of the different topics, which we will um, save and then send out to everybody. Are there any questions before Jackie takes over with the whiteboard? Okay. All right, let's get you. So uh, I'm going to post test to disable. All right, thank you, Sherry. Uh -huh. So you can think about your questions as I um, navigate. Um, hmm, I can't seem to put up my whiteboard, Sherry. 
post disabled participant screen sharing. You, know, you might have to share the whiteboard. Um, try again. Nope. Try one more time. You should be able to do it now. Raise a charm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Can you see the whiteboard, folks? Wonderful. Yes. Okay, and one thing that we'll be doing as we move from question to question, we will um, be saving these and you can actually go up in the corner of your toolbar and you can save on your computer as well if, if you're just too excited and you can't wait for us to get everything up for you. <laughs> um, so at this point, I can't see the chat, but share. I will bring one over. I'll bring one over. Um. So be thinking about how do we talk about white privilege? Yes. I am so thankful for the person that was the top of my mind for bringing that question. How to talk about white privilege. Tell me more about what you mean about privilege. Let's see, Jeannie, if you can um, just kind of unmute and be in the conversation and, um, and as comments or questions are put up on the, the whiteboard, then you can um, engage kind of in a conversation. Uh, I was de defined uh, Privilege is the unearned something you're born with. You don't even know that you have it as privilege in the world. So how do you talk about that? Because that's a huge issue right now. Most people don't even think about it. Um, I am not asking a question, but I am putting up a um, website of um, goodblacknews.org and the woman's name Lori Lake and Hutchinson wrote a beautiful article today about what we can start doing and what it means. I love the question, how can I help others understand how a worldview is created? This is, a, this is really a great one to look at. How do we create a frame that um, is talking about what we want? Um, so Jeannie, I I'd love to know when you say, how do we talk about white privilege? What is it that you want from the conversation? What's the outcome you're hoping for? Uh, for me, I would be an awareness of that this is, this is something that is that exists and um, so a conversation with people who have never thought about it before and just live their lives with it or live against it <laughs> mm. you know I think mostly for I, I'm, I'm thinking about people who have it who have white privilege to actually have a conversation about that that's very invisible privilege when the fish are in the water they don't see the water so the white privilege of exactly. people who have the privilege but don't see the water of that privilege I think that is really needed in the world is that people actually talk about the fact that we, those of us who are white live with that kind of privilege and can do things in the world so easily because of that privilege. We may have other things that we don't have privilege around. For example, you no know, being a lesbian, there are situations where being a lesbian is not a privileged position. So, right. those, you know, even just the notion of all kinds of privileges and lack of, lack of privileges in the world. But I think right now, the one the conversation right now, I think, is um, really, and I think the, the you know the way we walk in the world. Like people, I can get away without looking like a lesbian, right? But right. you know, I can't get away without looking white. I'm white, right? And so, and somebody who's black can't get away without looking black. So, I think we're talking about the really visible kinds of oppressions and and privileges. So, yes. Uh. 
Jeannie, what do you think of these um, comments? We have some comments. We have mostly questions here. Jackie, I can't move this down in the bottom right left corner. I can't move that. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> I kept getting stuck. Trying to think, how do I move it, Sherry? There's a, you should have a, um, all the way over to the left hand side is a, it's like a compass. Yep, found it. Ha, thank you. You taught me something new. Joan taught me that last time. Mm -hmm. are, are any of these helpful, Jamie, from? Uh, I think some of them are good, but I'm not sure. I, I actually like the question up top. What's what gets in the way of us talking about this? Yeah, that's that's a good one. And it seems like for people who have never thought about this before, inviting them to think about what they do without thinking about it, that people of color either may not be able to do it all, or they have to be very careful about how they do it. I mean, talking about pri white privilege? Mm -hmm. No, if. Talk, it, to, if, if I've never thought about the privileges I have, if you were to say to me, what can you do without even thinking about it? Um, Oh, as a question, yeah. yeah. What, is, what are you able to do in the world without even thinking? Yeah, about it? Do, 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 that's do a good you question. Think twice yeah. about cutting across somebody's yard. Do you think twice about jaywalking? Yeah, those kinds of things that that um, if you're a person of color, you would you just don't do. These are wonderful questions. Yeah. All right, I'm going. Is there anything else to add? There's. This is a very. Let me just fix this one, and I'm going to save this. I've got another one that's different from that one. Um, whiteboard saves. Are we okay with moving on to the next question, everybody? Yes, thank you, everybody. All right, I'm gonna clear this. Okay, thank you, an important question. And you got a toolbar, you can save these yourself um, and we will post these for you as well. How do we move the chat? when it's open and it's obscuring the view of the whiteboard. Up in the upper top, you'll see a, a red button with an X through it. If you click on the, the red button, it will go away. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. Sure, I can't see the chat, but do you want to add in yeah. and pick another yep. topic? There we go. How do we have time to spend on customer service training for our new unemployment claim handlers with all the unprecedented number of claims. Lisa, do you want to say a little bit more about that? Um, it's just, I am out in California and do some part-time work with the employment development department. Bottom is they're doing a massive hiring, which will be, um, I don't want to prejudge, but it's going to take a five minute questionnaire basically to hire people so historically there's been challenges because the people who are receiving claims and need the help are in um, various a lot of times desperate situations mm -hmm. so having sensitivity being able to flip a conversation from some that's frustrated the the value in this curriculum is huge so this is something i'm going to be looking for and this is the opposition i'm going to get is we've got too many claims now we don't have time for training so i'm trying to influence <laughs> does that help yes thank you thank you
And Lisa, if you want to comment on some of these as they come in. The other thing on your toolbar is a stamp. So if you see something that you okay. really like. This one's a little giving current state. Okay. I like the hope, you know, how can we help individual cope the focus on the other beyond just handling their claim. I like the important. Designing a one minute training. Okay. Yeah, no, I love that. And that's exactly it, right? There's going to be, if there's errors or negative, it's going to be a longer back end type of situation. So taking the time on the front end will save resources in the long term. yourself in the other shoes yeah and I see it ensures that everyone who calls in is given affirmation that that's the challenge right they're pushed to to hire people and get them out there and I don't want to say follow a script but everybody it is individual and has different needs being them to understand this yeah great one question got a gold star how does providing the training align with our aspirations to provide much needed support yeah yeah that's great i'm more over there create a field okay I like this. I'm gonna. Can I come to this group with all my? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's what it's for. I feel. I feel armed. Armed with like arrows in my quiver. <laughs> well, we'll have these questions to play with after the session. Everybody will. Yeah. Thanks. Wonderful. Awesome. Hey, you like Thank these, you. Lisa? Can we see? Yeah. It? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Got plenty to deal with here. I like the alignment with the. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I'm going to clean this, clear this one out. Okay. Next question, next, next comment or topic or challenge. And, and uh, Suzette, if you'd like to do any more explaining on this, that would be great. Sherry, can you put that in there? Oh, sorry. I thought I had forgot to click. Sorry, I wanted to give you the backdrop. So I'm the teacher in the middle school and we have to do our end of year conferences and feedback sessions with all of our parents for all of our students. So it's already a nightmare. Um, Friday night, we had the protest here in Charlotte and it happened to be right outside our school um, where they were protesting. And so right now there's just a lot of civil unrest. Um, a lot of people are angry and they feel like there's already inequity in the schools. And now I'm gonna be called <laughs> to call my parents at the end of the school year to give them feedback on the, you know, the virtual learning, how they grew, social emotional characteristics we're supposed to give feedback on too. So it's just, it's just not. <laughs> so that's the, the backdrop. So you're asking, we're trying to look for questions that can help you enter the conversation with the parents. Is that what you're looking for? Exactly kind of ease into it so that we can, you know, get the desired outcome, which is to have the conference with them about their students' presence or not presence, feedback on their grades, their social emotional state, but understanding that this is a hot button right now. And we've got Spanish speaking teachers, we've got English only teachers, we have people from all different walks of life. So I'm at the Spanish Immersion School, so. I 
like the one. How are you and your student doing at this time? The check-in is very important. Yeah, several questions. How are you holding up? Listen deeply and perhaps say, here's why I'm here today and you want to check in. Can we begin this call by holding some space to check in? So it's nice to see that generative questions are not always positive, but to deepen understanding, to strengthen a relationship. And that's what a lot of these questions are coming, not jumping into the evaluation conversation first. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder whether or not as a, as a school, as the personnel of the school, whether or not checking in with everybody to say, is this the time to be doing this? Might we instead be having different conversations with these parents um, rather than just going forward with something that was in, impor really important. It, it is still really important, but the timing is critical right now. What are you thinking, Suzette, about any of these? Um, I'm, I think I shared with you the past couple of weeks, I know I can't change the administration or our district. And so for me, it's, I love some of the suggestions on starting the conversation out differently. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about, you know, obviously reaching out to them first um, to see how they're doing, how they're holding up. We have to do weekly check-ins. So it's not like they haven't heard from me every week. Um, but again, I'm just worried about, like the, you said, the timing and so forth and how can I, you know, kind of make that work to my advantage for my conversations. Again, I know I'm not going to be able to change the rest of the school or even the middle school at this point, but how can I better serve my nice. students and my parents? So, thank very you. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right, I'm going to save this. And again, you guys can save these as well. And then I'm gonna clear it. Oh, I'm gonna save it again. Somebody just wrote something in the top. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna save it one more time. All right, then now I'm gonna clear it. Okay. All right. Sherry, do we have, um, we've got one probably for time for one more topic. We do indeed. And Willie, do you want to explain a little bit more about yours, provide a little more context? Yeah, so for this one, uh, we have people with developmental disabilities are a very high risk vulnerable group for COVID-19. Uh, we are now just bringing people back to adult day service sites. There's a huge conflict mm -hmm. on the transportation piece, getting people there. Um, on small vans and trying to maintain a distance of six feet. Uh, providers are going out of business uh, because they can't provide services. Mm -hmm. um, directors of counties are saying we need to protect people and it's just causing a huge conflict uh, among all our stakeholder groups. Thank you, Willie. Mm -hmm. 
How do any of these sound to you, Willie? And what are some ideas you might have as well? I think the one I haven't heard is how other states are handling this. Um, so that's a good one to explore. Very colorful, very good ideas. Mm -hmm. I really like the one using the guidelines established. How can we continue to work together to overcome barriers that we are seeking at this time? I think that helps maybe bring people together to look forward versus deal with uh, the conflicts that you're stuck on. We need a bigger whiteboard. You know, I'm putting these things around as quick as I can. How's this, ha how's this happening for you, Willie? Those are some great ideas. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Well, it's about 1229 and I'm going to save this last one. I'm going to bring us all back together. We got four more done this week, which we will send out to everyone um, as along with a link to the recording. Any other comments?